Let's uh, consider energy balance for an open system. Note that in contrast to a closed system, in case of open system, there is a transfer of mass in addition to work across the system boundaries. For example, there could be a flow of water in or out of the system. So mass, of course, has got energy associated with it. So uh, we need to consider the change in energy uh, due to mass flow. And sometime we also call it uh, flow work. So we can figure this out by finding out the work required in pushing a certain mass through a system boundary. So let's consider this, uh, this diagram that shows a tank. Uh, it has an inlet. So we have a, an element that we are going to push through the system boundary by applying a certain force to it. So the force required to push it through the system boundary, uh, F will equal pressure times the cross-sectional area for that element moving through the uh, inlet. And if it moves a distance L, then the work involved with the flow of mass equals F times L. And that, since force is pressure times area, we can write that as equal to PA times L. And since area times length is volume, that equals PV. Now the fluid element has got internal, kinetic, and potential energies. And uh, we must also account then for energy associated with the flowing fluid. So E will equal EI plus EKE plus EPE plus P times V. Uh, which is due to the flow work. So energy then equals the internal energy, EI, plus mu square over 2 for the kinetic energy, plus mgz for the potential energy, plus PV. Now, if we have uh, steady state conditions, then there is no change in the energy of system with time. So then the energy in equals energy out, uh, and there is no accumulation or depletion of energy in the system. So En equals E out under steady state conditions. So we can write a total energy balance by noting that energy in equals energy out for an open system. So we have Q in plus W in plus summation of J is equal to 1 to P since there may be several inlets to the system, m i for mass in parentheses e prime i j, where e prime i refers to the specific internal energy, that's energy per unit mass, plus u j square divided by 2, plus g z j, plus p j times V prime J, where V prime again is specific volume, or that's volume divided by mass, in the end of parentheses. So this equals Q out plus W out, again summation of E equals 1 to Q, M E in parentheses E prime I comma e plus u e square divided by 2 plus g z e plus p e times v e prime end of parentheses. So if we have only one inlet and one exit in the system then we can write this whole expression as q m and uh, q m will be the transfer of heat uh, per unit mass will equal, in parentheses, u2 square divided by 2 plus gz2 minus p2 divided by rho2, end of parentheses, minus u1 square divided by 2 plus gz1, p1 divided by rho1, end of parentheses, plus, in parentheses, we have ei2 prime, that is specific internal energy, minus EI prime 1, 
end of parentheses, plus WM. So note that in this case, uh, QM and WM are heat and work transfer per unit mass. And also note that we have replaced specific volume by the density. Uh, that's why we had P2 over rho 2 and P1 over rho 1. So we will uh, again uh, consider this uh, energy balance uh, when we are examining uh, systems that involve flow of fluid in a food processing plant.